Good morning again. It is a good morning. It's an awesome day. I heard Dick Roth say it's been two days without rain. He's afraid we're in a drought. <laughs> but we're so grateful for all of God's wonderful blessings. Amen. Amen. God bless America. It's great to, great to celebrate this. And you've got, you got all kinds of celebrations going on. Rodeo season. We've got a bunch of people in the uh, Little Britches um, finals. And uh, we'll have several over in the National High School finals. And uh, we're grateful for that. And, of course, Black Hills Roundup's going on at Belfouche. And all kinds of rodeos going. Uh, fireworks displays all over the place. And nobody's worried about fire this year. And all of that. You, you, you know, you know. There's caution too. Fireworks and be careful. You, you know what the cowboy's caution is? Don't name your horse firecracker. <laughs> if you don't get that, you're not a cowboy. You just do not want a, a horse blowing up. But but speaking of rodeo, you, you you know what they call a sleepy bull? Bulldozer. <laughs> and they say they say rodeos are in a bit of a jeopardy because they just. The, the stock producers just can't find enough help, just can't find enough drivers. They say the drivers are saying, yeah, it's just a load of bull. <laughs> and you will not find those jokes in any church other than a cowboy church. I will tell you that right now. Welcome. Glad you're here today. Thanks for all of you who are our guests with us today, the first timers. And uh, we don't try to be anybody else, but we do want to get into God's word today. And oh, my goodness, it's on thin ice. Because as you might expect, I'm, we're, we're, we're staying in the book of Luke. We've been taking this long walk with Jesus, just hanging out with Jesus, listening to his stories and watching what's happening, listening to his teaching. We're going to do that again today. And it's centered and focused around what it means to be a citizen. What's citizenship all about? But Jesus has some things to say to us that I think are incredibly important. Now, now, now two, three things for context. One is... Cowboy and Western culture is unabashedly, proudly patriotic. So if that bothers you, be bothered. <laughs> Second, um, I'm my primary audience uh, here and online, our primary audience focus are citizens of the United States. So when I reference that, uh, uh, that'll be my context. And I'm not going to try to play in all the others that, that might be watching, listening, or here today. God bless you. Welcome. But understand, I'm going to be focused on citizens of the United States as well as citizens of heaven. So, so we're going to talk in citizenship in, that, in, in just those two caveats. Please, please understand that. Third, I will say to you, the story that we're going to unpack today is a story about people who wanted to get Jesus on thin ice. Actually, they wanted him to crash. Actually, they wanted him to get arrested. Oh, boy. And, and here I am teaching it, and we're online. Who knows who's listening? Oh, boy. So pray for me. I prefer not to get arrested, but uh, I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to be OK. And, and some of you won't think I go far enough and say enough. And some of you think, oh, oh he went over the line. That will be good. Uh, we're, we're, I'm, I'm pretty sure we're good. Let's go to the book of Luke, and let's unpack what Jesus says to us and this story. So let's come up with a scripture and, and watch this. Jesus is always jabbing the super elite of this day called the Pharisees. Just over and over, he takes shots at them. He jabs them. And of course, they notice. And they're not happy. And the people around are like, yes, finally somebody's speaking true to this. We're good. But they're ticked off. And so they're seeking some way, other context. Notice that the, in the nation of Israel at that time, like almost all of the known world, was under the empire of Rome. Rome uh, had almost complete control of, of the world. And like governments get, uh, you, have you ever heard of government corruption? Probably you've never heard of it. But ancient history, they had corruption in government back in those days. And, and, and so it was onerous. And, and the Jewish people, and, and there was a theological debate going on to say, should we only give reverence to God and only give respect to God, and we shouldn't give respect to human government like a Caesar? 
And you're going to see that coming up in this, these texts and contexts. But now these super religious are trying to get Jesus backed into a corner. They're going to use flattery. They're, they're, they're going to ask him a question that says, is he true to the scriptures of the Old Testament? Or is he true to the dogma of the Roman Empire? And can we get him caught in that tenseness, in that tension, and get him in trouble? So that's, that's the time. Watch this. Keeping a close watch on him, they sent spies who pretended to be sincere. Oh, boy. There's a lot of people in that. I've got to go on. They hoped to catch Jesus in something he said so that they might hand him over to the power and authority of the governor. Let's go to the next verse. So the spies questioned him. Teacher. Now watch this. By the way, everything they're going to say about Jesus is spot on true. But they're, they're doing it in this case to set him up. To say to, they're, they're going to say to him, you always speak the truth. You don't have partiality. That's, that's absolutely true. But there's, it's like when somebody comes up to you and says, I need some feedback. I know you always tell the truth. I've had that happen to me a lot. And my first thought is, oh boy, this won't end well. What are they, what are they doing? Or, or I, I've had people come up to me and say, you seem to have the ability to speak truth to power. <laughs> I'm thinking, no, 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 be your own hit man. <laughs> you, 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 not me. You know, it's, it's one of those deals when people start complimenting you. There's that. Yes, thank you. I'll receive that. On the other hand, what are, you, what are you setting me up for? And they're setting Jesus up. Watch this. Teacher, we know that you speak and teach what is right and that you do not show partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. All of that is absolutely spot on correct. Let's go on now. Here's the question. Is it right for us to pay taxes to Caesar? or not. Oh boy, I just, they just brought up taxes. And they're saying, they're not actually asking, is this tax fair? Is this tax onerous? They're asking the question theologically, is it right since we are children of God, children of heaven, is it right for us to pay taxes to an earthly government or should we just ignore that? Is it right for us to, they're, they're hoping in this case They've just said, you speak the truth. You th They're hoping in this case, Jesus would say, no. Caesar is not your Lord. Caesar is not your ruler. You should not speak. You should not pay taxes. And they turn him over to the governor to say, here's a guy who's openly saying, don't pay taxes. <laughs> and this would not have been popular, trust me. So, so that's what they're hoping for. He, Jesus, saw through their duplicity and said to them, show me a denarius. So a denarius was a silver coin. It was, um, it, 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 say, like this. And it had on it, like coins do, a picture. And it was about a day's wage. That's the, for minimum wage workers, it was a day's wage. That's the best I can get for you. I have in my wallet a $100 bill, which Esther didn't know I had. <laughs> and, and I'm hoping you won't tell her. Um, and, and this, you know, many of us in this room are old enough to remember when this was a week's wage, um, and now it's not a day's wage, and <laughs> sorry if it's not your job, but whatever. Uh, um, anyway, it's a $100 bill. It's the closest I could get to a denarius. And it says on it, the United States of America, and has a picture of Ben Franklin. On the back of it, it does say, in God we trust. Grateful for that, that tip of the hat to God. But it also says United States of America and has a picture of Independence Hall and, and that's a $100 bill. And Jesus is saying, I'm not going to loan this to you, Todd, but um, uh, Jesus is saying, does anybody here have a denarius? I should have asked Todd for a $100 bill. Uh, I wasn't thinking. Um, and, and, and Jesus said, now read it to me. What's, what's this? Whose image and inscription are on it? Caesar's, they replied. Let's go to the next verse, please. He said to them, then give, oh, oh, listen to this. Then give back to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. I want to come back later to talk about, Jesus said, whose image is on this? Whose inscription's on this? And he says, so this is Caesar's image and inscription on it. 
It's okay to pay taxes. By the way, the Roman government insisted that when you pay taxes, it couldn't be in any of the multitude of currencies they oversaw. It had to be in a Roman denarii. And, and, and they're saying it's okay to give to Caesar what has his stamp on it is Caesar's, but what has God's stamp on it, you need to give to God, which a tip of the hat doesn't quite do it on this $100 bill, but you do. I'll get back to that. They were unable to trap him in what he said there in public. And astonished by his answer, they became silent. Way to go, Jesus. He threaded the needle. He walked on this thin ice. He didn't fall in. He didn't get in trouble. He honored God, and he honored the government. And that leads us to these questions. What should we do? How can we pull that off? Well, I'm going to go through a list of stuff with you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll tuck this hundred back after a while. But I want to go through a list of you with you and say that... Um, that um, there are certain things we need to do as a citizen. In this case, we'll just talk about them as a citizen. Let's go up to that list. On earth, what do we need to do? First of all, we need to pray. I mentioned to start with that, that in cowboy culture, we are, are unabashedly, proudly patriotic. We also highly value the First Amendment, free speech, and we exercise it a lot. We talk a lot. We complain a lot. We whine a lot. We speak about power a lot. You go to a branding or a, or, or, or a cow sale or uh, whatever, and, and, and you're going to hear quite a bit said about the government, the odds are, and lots of it's not complimentary. That, that's, we, we, we're unabashed about that. And I would say uh, if you want to keep a freedom, you've got to use it, so we're, we're doing that well. Here's one of the things that I've been stirred to say is... Do I pray as much for my country as I whine about it? Uh, the answer is usually no. I got to quit whining so much or praying more, one or the other. Let's see, which am I going to do? I, I've tried to discipline myself on news these days because I find that news makes me mad. And, and so I try to, uh, a little anger control, say I can only do this. And, and I'm trying now to remember to pray through some of this stuff, saying, wow. Occasionally you get some good news. I'm going to highlight a couple of those things today. But, but I'm just saying we need to pray more. I, I almost never do this, but I brought stuff today. And I'm going to read something. I, I mentioned that Benjamin Franklin is on our $100 bill. And I'm going to, I'm going to read something about this. I, th I think you'll be intrigued by it. It was the summer of 1787, and representatives were meeting in Philadelphia to write the Constitution. They'd struggled for several weeks, made little or no progress. 81, Brian, that's older than me even. 81-year-old Benjamin Franklin rose and addressed the troubled and disagreeing convention that was about to adjourn in confusion. Here's what he says. In the beginning of the contest with Britain, when we were sensible of danger, we had daily prayers in this room for divine protection. Our prayers, sir, were heard, and they were graciously answered. All of us who were engaged in the struggle must have observed frequent instances of a superintending providence in our favor. Have we now forgotten this powerful friend? Or do we imagine we no longer need his assistance? I have lived, sir, a long time, and the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of mankind. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his notice, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? We have been assured, sir, in the sacred writings, that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I firmly believe this. I therefore beg leave to move that henceforth, prayers imploring the assistance of heaven and its blessing on our deliberation be held in this assembly every morning. That was approved and that practice has continued and for that, praise God. I just want to amen what Benjamin Franklin said in that prayer is incredibly important. Let's go to the next one, please. And that is, oh, oh I'm sorry, pay taxes. Jesus said it. Jesus said, whose inscription was on this? Who, who, who's, who's is this? I, I got to be, I got to be honest, I don't like taxes. I don't, I, I pay them. I, I've, I've always paid them. Um, I, I'm, to, to my knowledge, I have no struggles right now with the IRS. 
Um, um, but I don't like taxes. I think it's too much. I don't vote for taxes. Uh, you, you do, you do your thing. But I, I've been told by many politicians, we'll do this and we'll do this. It'll only last for a year or two. And huh, guess what? It doesn't go backwards. Um, um, and, and I'm just saying, I, I, think, I think taxes could be reduced and spending could be reduced, right? This is not a pro-tax thing. This is pay what you owe. And Jesus is saying, because this belongs to the US government, it's OK. You can pay your taxes. In fact, that's part of being honest and honorable. Let's go to the next one, please. Respect authority. Oh, oh, this gets harder. By the way, I want to put in context the fact that Jesus, who is saying, pay taxes to Caesar, and Paul, who talks to us in, later in the New Testament about giving respect to authority because authority structures are set up by the Almighty God. Both of them were lawbreakers. Put that in context. Both of them, Paul especially, he went to jail so many times he couldn't count. He just said, a lot. Because they defied the Roman government. They spoke against it. They were, but they, but they say to us, respect authority. And you're thinking, huh? Balance that out. Respect authority. How do we give respect to authority and yet push back against authority? How do we decide, is civil disobedience ever appropriate? How do we decide when and where? And I would, uh, I'm going to get back to this a little later, but I will say God's law comes first. Our allegiance to God and his word and his truth comes first. Respect authority. That doesn't mean I have to respect every individual who happens to be an authority. You can tell me later if you think I'm stretching that, but I don't. Um, um, but I do respect the fact that there is authority and I respect those authority structures as long as we can do it to be under the authority of heaven. Amen? By the way, speaking of respect from authority, I want to show a little respect. Uh, the, the Supreme Court of the United States has handed down several verdicts this week. And uh, some of them are landmark, and, and I'm not even going to touch on those maybe what I'm saying you, you may or you may have your own opinion you're certainly welcome to your own opinion and you can express it openly and publicly how you feel about it but two things I want to say is the Supreme Court had two decisions this week very much in favor of religious liberty and for that I am grateful I'd like to give the Supreme Court a hand right now for doing that I appreciate and applaud the fact that they they uh, understand conscience and understand our ability to exercise our religion as per our Constitution. And for that, I'm very grateful. So all our whining, it's also good to remember every once in a while, we get some wins. Every once in a while, there's some positives, and we respect that authority. Let's go to the next one. And the next one is defend. We, we just had the singing this morning. Thank you, sir, for being a Marine. Thank you, sir, for defending our nation. We got lots and lots of people out here in the audience today. Lots of you have defended our country physically. And I would say thank you very much for that. We honor you and respect you for that. I would say to all of us, defend. Defend what we have. Defend our freedom. Defend our liberty. It's appropriate to do that. Be in defense. And let's go to, go to one more on that. And that is vote. Vote. Uh, it's possible most of us are going to vote alike in this, uh, at least in this audience today. Not all of us, but most of us will. And and but but uh, vote. It is an it is the bottom line bed rock accountability of our system and our culture. And you'd use it or you lose it. So I would say make sure you vote. Do your best to vote. Be an informed voter. I'm going to get back to how to do that in just a little bit. By the way, I'll give you some heads up on that, but, but I will just say that's a very important thing. Let's switch gears. That's what it means to be a citizen of he on earth. What's it mean to be a citizen of heaven? So let me go back to that scripture passage. Recall Jesus when they were trying to trick him, and they said, is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Jesus said, show me a denarii. Whose in, who's in image is on it? Whose inscription's on it? They said Caesar's on this. So he said, you can give this to Caesar. It's OK. But you understand, Jesus has such incredible depth. What he's doing in that is he's teaching us more than just about paying taxes. He asks the question, whose image is that? Some of you, you may remember early on in the book of Genesis when God is giving us this whole picture of 
his creation and he, it says God said let us God the Father Son and Holy Spirit God said let us in our connection let us create man which is humankind let us create them male and female God created them God said let's create them and but here's the key I want to get to in our image our image God the Father Son and Holy Spirit said we're creating people humankind male and female we are creating them in our image oh boy now I have a lot of really good jokes about this about you being the image of God and and I'm gonna go past all of those because because this is actually an important serious truth but the fact of it is ladies and gentlemen you are created in the image of God I think that's funny some days. I had this conversation with God, so I'm like your image. <laughs> this was plan A. This was your best idea. Huh. Sometimes when I'm ticked at somebody else, I'm thinking, right, 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 right. In your image, huh? huh. Seriously? Did you miss one? You skipped him or her. You, you see what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm just saying... There's all kinds of stuff that come up, but here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. You are designed in the image of God. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I'm not even sure I know all that means. I'm pretty sure it doesn't mean just physical characteristics. In fact, it may not mean that at all. I'm pretty sure it talks about our character, the way we think, how we respond how we react, our possibilities, our capabilities that got marred because of sin, that got twisted. God wants to redeem that and restore that. And he's working on us now to do that and we're perfectly going to happen when we get to heaven. But you are made in the image of God. That's an amazing responsibility. So let me just, let me just come back to the context of the scripture passage we're reading. Jesus said, this, this denarii, this $100 bill, whatever, this, this has the image of Caesar. It's okay to pay Caesar that. But God says, you, madam, you, sir, are made in the image of God. So you give to God, he says. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, but give to God what belongs to God. Oh. So a $100 bill is not what he's talking about. Might involve that, but maybe not. He's talking about you are made in the image of God and he's saying then I want you to give you to God. I want you to give your whole self to God. Oh. Oh. Later on he, he, in, in, in the Bible he will say present yourselves a living sacrifice to God wholly acceptable which is the, your reasoned service and be transformed by the renewing of your mind so you may live out his good and perfect and acceptable will, Romans 12.1. He's, he's, he's talking to us about the fact that we give ourselves to God because we are made in the image of God. And I see, see, being a good citizen of earth is tough. God says, being a citizen of heaven, I want it all. I don't want just your taxes. I whine when I pay taxes, because, come on, this is a percentage. God says, I'll take 100% of you. That's what I want, is 100% of you. I want it all. I want you. I want every facet of your life. I want everything about you. I want everything to be surrounded in the fact that you're a child of God. You have my image. You bear my image. You project my image. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, that, this is a responsibility that's amazing. I am in the image of God. Oh! Wow, I need to straighten up, shape up, behave. Hello? If I'm in the image of God, that's a suck. In fact, in fact, again, it's one of those things, we talked about this with forgiveness last week, it's one of those things that's frankly impossible. It's one of those things that God calls me to something I can't do. You say, well, that's not fair. No. He wants me to know that I can't do it, so he says, now we can start, and I'll help you. I'll do this through you. I'll flow through you. 
I'll work through you. I'm in the image of God. I can't really pull that out. I'm just not that good. And don't say amen to that. Because you're not either, right? I mean, I'm just saying, you're just not that good. And God says, now we can get somewhere. Because you're in my image. I did this on purpose. This is my plan A. And I put you here to bear my image and to show my grace and my forgiveness and my goodness. And I want this to flow through you. You are in the image of God. Wow. I think it's important to be a good citizen on earth. God's word says it's important. But he says more than that, it's important to be a citizen of heaven. So, so, so let's go back to just one practical application. Let's go to the next one. And that is, you know this, many of you, from the Lord's Prayer. And it's one of those prayers, may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Watch this. Remember, you remember we mentioned first duty of citizenship is to pray. Jesus would tell us, this is how you pray. May your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So you understand my prayers for my nation, my prayers are shaped by heaven prayers. There's some stuff I really wish would happen differently about my nation. I whine about speed limits at times. I'm fairly sure God's not that bothered. I just, something tells me he's just not that much of a hurry. Hello? So I don't think it's in accordance with this prayer to pray, may your kingdom come, may the speed limits all be raised to 85. I'm pretty sure God's going to say, huh? Where do you get that? That's not, that's not what I was talking about. You, 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 get, you get the drift here? Now there are other things, though, I think matter to God, incredibly matter to God. If you're around here, you know that I'm, I'm staunchly, fundamentally, convictionally pro-life. I think it matters to God, absolutely matters to God, that we treat all human life with dignity, and I believe Scripture, the preponderance of evidence in Scripture is that life, human life begins at conception. And so therefore, I would say to you, that matters to God. I think it's appropriate for me to pray for that in the light of heaven. Does that make some sense now? Speed limits? Probably not. I hope God chuckles when I mention stuff like that. I hope he thinks I'm funny. I hope he thinks I'm funny. But what I want to pray is, God, what's important to you? What bothers you? What matters to you? And you can disagree with me on, it, on any of these elements, but the fact of it is, God is saying to us, I want you to focus your praying. I want you to focus, we talked about respecting authority, around what happens in heaven. Understand it's a different authority structure in heaven. You don't get to vote on who's God. He can't be impeached. He's not up for re-election. He is God. He is the Lord God, sovereign, most high. We live in a sovereignty of God. You do get to vote on lots of people in the United States. Make sure you do it. But understand you come to God with acceptance and saying, you are the Lord God. And I need to figure out what it is you want and do that instead of trying to help you figure out what I want and do that. It's a whole different mindset. Under, under, understand? What I'm saying is that, that how we become citizens on earth is shaped, influenced, stronger, directed by how we are citizens of heaven. And it is in that it is in that frame, it is in that context to say, one of the questions I'm, I'm trying to ask God is, God, is this important to you? God, does this matter to you? God, does this give, when I'm ticked off at something, I ask, God, does this give you a bad day? And quite a bit of the time it comes back, nah, not a problem. <clears throat> that means I should just get over it. But occasionally it comes back, there's stuff that I wasn't, bothered by at all that I recognize this gives God a really bad day. I saw a little 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 news piece this week on child trafficking. And the people that gives God a bad day. God says better for you that a millstone were hanged about your neck and you were cast into the sea than if you mess with one of these little ones. It gives God a bad day. It ticks him off. It makes him angry. So I'm all right to be angry about that. Are you with me? 
I'm all right to pray angry about that. Come on, God, shut these people down. Come on, God, help this. Come on, God, deliver. Come on, give, get us a, give us a break here. I'm, I'm, I'm all right to be angry with my government that actually allows this to happen. I'm all right to push back on that. I don't think I'll get arrested for that, but I'm still all right to be angry about that. We should not be facilitating the abuse of children. Amen? See, that I think is in the context of heaven. It's okay to be a citizen on earth in the context of being a citizen of heaven. So my big question for you is this. It's not if you are made in the image of God, it is since you are made in the image of God. Are you acting like it? Are you praying like it? Are you respecting authority in that perspective? Are you being obedient to those things that don't go against heaven? And are you willing to be disobedient to something that might go against heaven? Oh boy. How are you a citizen on earth framed by the fact that you have the image of God. Well, I plan to go to a rodeo on the 4th. I'm betting there'll be a wild celebration when the flag come in. They will pray in the name of Jesus at that rodeo. Thank you, announcers. Thank you, sirs, for doing that. I appreciate that culture. And the flag will be honored and esteemed even while there's some things that we hate that's going on right now. I plan to be patriotic. I plan to be proud that I'm an American. Because I am. Mostly. And I'm 100% proud that I'm a citizen of the kingdom of God. And that I bear the image of God. And I'm humbled by that. Because I don't think that, I don't think I'm good enough. Let me rephrase that. I'm real sure I'm not good enough. And I'm 100% saying, God, since I bear the image of God, oh, wow, I need help. Amen? So let me pray for you. Father, we need help. We need help as individuals because we bear your image to be your likeness and to demonstrate who you are. We need help as citizens. I want to pray right now for the United States of America and pray that your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I pray for all the nations of the earth right now and pray, God, that you would give your peace and your grace and your truth and your light wherever that can shine. I pray, God, that you would give wisdom to our leaders. I thank you for some decisions that are good. I don't like a lot of the decisions. would pray, God, that you would give insight to that. I pray for the voters of America, that they would be awake and alert and aware to things that really matter. I pray, God, that my decisions on how to vote and what to defend would be more on how it affects my back pocket and more on how it affects your kingdom. I pray, God, that your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that starts in my heart, and that starts in my life. I pray for that in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go enjoy the fourth. You're a citizen of God. See ya.